Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to my reaction and discussion for episodes 6 and 7 of the Fate Zero anime. We have started the fights officially. It started with Lancer and Saber on a one-on-one -on -one duel. Two very honorable characters. We were learning a little bit more about their abilities, about their weaknesses, and uh, things were going like pretty, I wouldn't say smoothly, because uh, Saber actually took quite a, a bad... Um, injury during the fight but like things were relatively one-on-one -on -one, and then all of a sudden Ryder decides that he just kind of wants to join the fray and then he calls out any other servants that might be watching the fight to come and join in so we had um, Archer show up there was the awesome introduction of Berserker uh, he is one of my favorites just like the whole look and just like the mystery of him assassins watching from the uh, kind of like the wings and people corrected me on a couple of things. Uh, so first I was going on about how like, oh my god, Berserker, he seems like the one to be afraid of. And he was just kind of like, just uh, manhandling uh, Archer's attacks like they were nothing. Um, but it turns out that Archer aka Gilgamesh is actually arguably the strongest servant and I am uh, not giving him enough credits. So I guess his um, arrogance comes from something you know he's not just talking a big game it seems like he is actually quite strong so i will learn to like you know not underestimate him also i was a little confused about like if servants are allowed to kill masters masters are allowed to kill servants how all that works so people told me that it's kind of all on the table um servants can kill masters masters can kill other masters masters can kill servants um servants without a master they have a certain level of mana that they can like live in that world before they disappear and they can make a pact with another master who has lost a servant. And I guess that's that whole area with that church um, that the priest is in, is that's kind of like the safe zone, the sanctuary. So that's interesting. So that's something I didn't know and now I do. So I'm like, I think that's pretty cool that it's just like, um, it's like a free for all. And also that what else was there too? Oh yeah, that thing at the end with Castor, who's just like in love with Saber and is so excited that Saber is in the fight because I think it seems like he wants to kind of make her his his slave, calling her like his virgin love or something, which is even creepier given that someone let me know that um, I believe Saber is like she has the mind of an adult, but she has like she's in the body of like a 15 year old, which is just like that much creepier. Uh, and also, I did not look up Berserker's information. I talked about, like, I'm kind of tempted to. I did not. I have not looked up anyone. People said, like, if a servant is dead, you can look it up. Um, but until then, just be careful about that. So I will. I will uh, refrain from doing that. So I really don't know anything about Berserker. So, uh, yeah, with that fight, like, it is, it's on now. And I'm very excited to see, like, where we're going to go with these two episodes. So that's enough for me. Let's go ahead. Let's watch these episodes. And let's. Oh, boys. Okay, someone's in a hurry here. Damn. <laughs> and she is really, like, she is living life right now. She's like, I'm gonna die soon. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna do something fun. <laughs> Uh, that's terrifying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she is enjoying herself way too much. I love how she seems like such a poised and proper woman and then she's just like crazy. She's actually crazy. Ooh, who that? Is that assassin? Oh, oh shit, Caster. Oh no. Oh no, I wasn't expecting them to be meeting up with each other so soon. Oh damn. I wonder if Saber knows who Caster is. I know Saber's not the type to like be afraid, but oh god, if she knew what he had in store for her, she might be even more wary. <laughs> As creepy as Caster is, though, I feel like he's definitely going to be a very interesting character. So I'm, like, kind of glad that 
they're giving him his time relatively early in. Also, like, just like how I said, I wouldn't mind watching, like, a sub-series with just uh, Ryder and Waver. I also wouldn't mind seeing, like, Iris and Saber on, like, their little adventures. Just, like, her experiencing... Both of them, I guess, experiencing, like, modern life, you know? You can definitely tell certain characters are getting more uh, screen time. Like, they're more of, like, the quote-unquote main characters. But I hope we do get some more insight into some of, like, the more forgotten ones. Oh, that's what he called her. Holy virgin. Ugh, creepy. Because <laughs> we see him at the end getting uh, hanged for something. About to get hanged for something, but I don't know what... Gills there is. He has no problem saying his name here. Oh, wait. Wait, is she not who he thinks? Is he saying, like, John, like, John Dark? And he's mistaken her for... for that? I'm... Oh. I'm a little confused, but I'm not going to look up any information. Yeah, John Dark, okay. I don't know the history of John Dark. I don't know if John Dark, like, yeah, she calls her, like, ish, because she says she's the King of England. I know John Dark. Maybe that is actually her, like, her, ac her actual, you know. I don't know if I'm making sense, but, like, if she's thrown away that name and calling herself something else. Obviously, history is not my strong suit. <laughs> Although she seemed pretty angry with him, so maybe, uh, maybe he's on the mark there. In this case, I am kind of tempted to look this up and see if she is actually John Dark. I have to remember that that she does have that injury and that is really going to hamper her. And there's the assassin. So yes, as people said, like, it would make sense that the assassins would not fight anyone head on because it's like the weakest in terms of... Ooh, physicality. What the fuck? Like, I know this guy's fucked up. Oh, they're like kids. Oh my gosh, this guy. He really seems to go after kids, doesn't he? Ugh. Ugh. He's having a temper tantrum. Oh, God, he's just these poor children.
Ugh. If there's one master I want to be killed off, it's this guy. Yeah. I hate that they're, like, so aligned with each other. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's already kidnapped a bunch of people. Ugh, like, kids. Was there a reason for kids other than, I guess, they're the easiest to overpower and kidnap? Oh, he just sees it as, like, it's an art form. Because that's what he said, quantity over quality. It's like he wanted to take his time with it. Ugh, God, I hate that guy. And that's another thing people told me is, like, the Masters have to have a command seal in order to be able to take on a Servant if their previous uh, sab uh, Saber Servant dies. I like, uh, I like Lancer, too. He's uh, honorable, a little flirty, a little cocky, though but has his morals. All right, we got a new character here. Now, is that something... Is that something Lancer would do without a command seal going after a master? It doesn't seem like something he would do. Oh, okay, an alteration to the contract. She's like, let me come in and spell some exposition here. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, he is honorable, even after what he did. Even after what that guy made him do, Ultra Ball made him do, he still is like, I won't allow uh, misspeaking of ill-speak of my master. Even though they're very at odds with what they want. Now there's that little mole. <laughs> Yeah, I could see Lancer not going after a master being like, well, they can't fight. Especially like Iris, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like they're... It's like a dungeon in an RPG. <laughs> Damn, I guess this guy is... Has a lot of magical abilities. His, um... Iris has, like, healing abilities, but that seems to be about it. Maybe... Maybe she's stronger than I think, though. I like it's like thank you for uh like like thank you for pointing out exactly where he is. Yeah. 
like, oh, this is all right. It is kind of interesting that he has like Iris go out as like the face and the body. The master. Oh, here we go. Damn. Woo. Whereas he's kind of in the shadows, ready to take people out. Wow. Okay. And yet, of course, they're going to survive it. Cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> And of course it will have. There's <laughs> that'd be kind of funny if that was it. Just be like, oh, and he's he's dead. Of course, right? Oh, okay. Oh, the priest. Oh, shit. I wasn't expecting him to show up. All right, time to see what this guy's about. All right, here we go. Okay, so not necessarily uh, servants fighting, but master on master, or sort of master, not really. Obviously, I knew there was more to the priest than just, you know, the surface level, but... It is just kind of funny to see a priest just being like, I'm about to go murder this girl. I feel like of everybody, everyone should team up and take out Caster. Just because, like, he's actually harming innocent children. Yeah, the exact opposite of Kyrie. <laughs> not quite, not quite. They just kind of have almost the same... Ideals. Okay. It's not the children killing that's the issue. It's the fact that they're using magic willy-nilly. Yeah, all right, cool. Now, whether people will agree to that is another story.
<laughs> he is pretty boring, just hold up in his room all the time. He's like, well, maybe now you've got it, my attention. He's being very... I find it hard to believe he's got absolutely nothing that he is going to wish for. Is he going to be like, can we go, can we switch? Can I be your servant instead? I don't know if that's possible. Like, Gugumish, it sounds like he's like, I'm going to take you out, like, we're going to go night on the town, let's go to strip clubs and stuff. <laughs> Like I say, he definitely has, uh, Gilgamesh as someone who wants to be entertained all the time, and he's got, like, the most boring master. <laughs> I 
Why has he got to be so, like, so secretive, so shady? I want to know more about this guy. Other than, like, he doesn't feel joy, apparently. But he's doing this, he doesn't even know what he wants. He did kind of, like, get thrust into this by... Oh. Except that we know that he doesn't like that guy. <laughs> we know he doesn't like the mage killer. That's about it. All right, so we learned a little bit more about him, but there's still so much. A lot of near fights, but not not quite any. The last couple of episodes being so like action packed, this one feels like oh, I mean that building blew up and there was a you know that cool like one on one with uh what's her name like Maya and um, Kyrie, but. All right, so I mean, uh, Gilgamesh definitely makes himself to the, in this episode out to be like a little bit more than just a uh, megalomaniac, I guess. You know, someone who just like, I am the ruler of this world and I deserve everything and I am a god and stuff like that. But I uh, had almost had like a little heart to heart there with Kiri almost. I feel really sorry for the people who live in this city. It's just every once in a while, just a ton of crazy stuff happens. Like explosions and death and stuff, and then it just goes back to normal again. Oh, that's creepy. So yeah, is there has there been am I am I dumb? Has there been like a explained why this specific city is chosen as the place where the holy war happens? Is there significance? We know that him, the mage killer, we knew that I believe he was born in the city. There's some sort of like magical entity to the city, or I don't I'm not quite sure. I said a bad place for people to live, like, most of the time, because the, the war doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's just like, man, what a shitty place to have to live. It'll be interesting, so... It'll be interesting, like, that whole thing that was mentioned in the last episode about how the new rule is, like, Caster is gonna be the one that everybody has to go after, and, like, will they listen to that rule? Certain characters, I feel, especially if they know what Caster is doing and the and the servant or, or the master is doing, like that they're kidnapping humans, children, and murdering them, sacrificing them, that they would be like, oh yeah, like we got to put our differences aside, we got to take this guy out. But other characters would be like, no, I'm going to do what I want. The whole thing too about magic, right? That they're just using magic. Does Caster, does he hear about this too? Is Caster going to know that they're all going to be after him? Talk about a handicap. Ah, okay, there we go. A little bit of incentive. It'd be funny if it was like an awkward Zoom call where it's just like Caster was in on it too. He'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> Everyone's trying to kill me. Mm. 
Well, I mean, we all knew that, obviously. Of course, Archibald's still alive. Because he wasted his at the last fight. And as we know, oh, uh, yay, the, my boy! My boy, who I haven't seen in so long. He wasn't all, at all in the last episode. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> I love he just straight up, like, has no issue giving his name out to everybody. <laughs> and showing himself to humans. I feel like... Him and Gilgamesh are, they're both very boisterous and arrogant with like, <laughs> but in very different ways. <laughs> Amazing. That must be like an extra, 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 extra large shirt. <laughs> I love he's just ordering stuff online. He doesn't even care. <laughs> He'll stand out a little bit more than Saber, though, and Saber already drew a lot of attention from people. <laughs> He's definitely going to have to buy from the very big and tall store. <laughs> exactly. I love everything just stops for a moment with these two. <laughs> Waver and Rider Adventures. <laughs> In that clothing. <laughs> I want him to go to the fight looking like that, please. Please. He's so proud of his shirt. He's like, oh, he he's like, I gotta show it to everybody. <laughs> I just love his whole thing for this is, I'll do this if it means I get pants. <laughs> and now it's gonna go back to serious. No, oh, they're gonna like use her to lure them out, lure them out. Yep. Of course, Saber would think that way. Of course, right? She's just like innocent people are being killed. I have to stop it.
Yeah, there's like, it's not passed yet. So he's still alive. Oh. Oh, Saber does not like that. She's like, no, I want to do this myself. I wonder if he's going to use a command seal on her. Okay, so he's saying, yeah, like, this is a, this is, could be a trap. Oh, poor Saber. I wonder if Iris is going to go against what Kiritsuku's, Kir eh, I can't say his name, what he says. She's definitely bonding with Saber. Oh yeah, their daughter. <laughs> Is he saying straight up? Yeah, like what happens if you decide to just not partake in the war anymore? Oh, <laughs> Maya is here. Yeah, that's a whole awkward thing where it's like he's having a little bit of an affair with her. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get another fight here. Who's it gonna be? Is it Caster or someone else? Oh, the kids. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That he knows. That's like. Oh, that's so creepy. It's like he. Oh, so creepy. And he knows that she's going to try and save them. Uh, the kids all like brainwash. Is that why they're coming with him? Because like this guy is, yeah, he is. He is taking control. Because like he is the epitome of stranger danger. Oh, this is so. Oh, this is horrible. <gasps> oh, ooh. Okay. Well. Oh, this is so fucking. Oh, he's awful. It's like, hopefully some other people are coming too, or are they just basically like, we'll let Caster take Saber out. 
Because that would be a uh, strategy too, is just like, just let Caster take out as many other enemies as possible. You come in, defeat them, and then you've got less servants to deal with too. Oh, fuck. Oh man, oh man, I didn't think this was happening so soon. No, oh, I really like Saber. Oh, I knew that was gonna... Oh. oh, okay, I don't know what's going on. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I mean, I knew that kid probably wasn't gonna make it, but I was not expecting the kid to be used as, like, a bomb, as a trap. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. All right, we get to see Caster's powers here. Ooh, okay. Oh, and of course it's like creepy tentacles. Oh, just it would it suits him very well. <laughs> but once again, she is at a disadvantage because she's still injured. All right, I'm I am excited for this one. This one, there's some emotion behind it. With like the last one with Lancer and Saber, it was just like, okay, well, this has got to happen. We're two honorable knights. We got to do this. This there's like, there's some animosity, and that could be her downfall. Unfortunately, she's fighting with emotion, and also injured. All right, good. I'm glad someone's coming in. Just poor Saber's got to do everything by herself. Once again, this is more history stuff that I'm like, I don't know. Once again, how very appropriate that his is, uh, his, like, familiars are thing. Yeah, Lancer is like tentacle monsters. Fuck yeah, Lancer. <laughs> Saber's a popular girl. <laughs> Everybody just wanted to kill her, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Ah, so he gave his name. I can't remember if he gave his name in the first fight, but... Well, he did also say the one who wants to, who's going to kill Saber is me, so... It, it is kind of funny how they're fighting together. <laughs> like, they're working together, but he's like, but I'm going to kill you after this. <laughs> and then she's like, well, I got to kill you because I have to get my arm better again. Oh, that's that Mercury. Oh. It's interesting that the abilities that the mages themselves have, not even their servants. <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> they like their dramatic entrances, don't they? All right, I like that we're getting uh getting a taste of uh, everybody's powers here. So Iris has the ability to heal. He's got super speed. He's got like this mercury stuff. I wonder what waivers would be if he has any, because he's still pretty young. He's, he's going to give himself a heart attack if he keeps this up. Okay, he's slowing down time so they can't detect him. If he keeps having his, his heart rate go super fast, super slow, super fast, super slow, like that's not good for his body. Why would you why why would you say his name before you shoot? <laughs> that is very dumb. Ah, damn. Okay. Shit. Something in that gun is going to maybe it's like a mercury piercing bullet or something. Cuz we know he's got that one gun he really likes. Something's there. <laughs> I just love I just yelled the guy's name like just shoot him. Why would you give him, like, a warning? It's pretty sad, though, like, of everybody that only Lancer showed up to help out. But, of course, the most honorable one, you know, would want to take out the, uh... The servant that is, like, using his magic willy-nilly and killing innocent people. <laughs> I'm sure Ryder will be making his way eventually. He just has to get pants. 
Oh, wait, no, he gets his pants after he defeats Caster. <laughs> oh, I just love that. I love that we got that little bit of, uh, of Ryder just to kind of, like, lighten things up a little bit. Because child murder is a little bit of a downer. But I'm glad we're having a Caster fight. Alright, so interesting a uh, couple of episodes. So the, the first episode was kind of like a little bit of a wind down. And I say this with an episode where a whole building was blown up. But it's like a little bit more kind of backstory. So that whole thing about Caster uh, revealing, it seems like Saber is uh, John Dark. Uh, whether that is the case or not, or he's mistaken. But she seemed to be a little, like, almost rattled when he called her that. So maybe maybe he's right about that. If I get some more information, I'm, I'm really tempted to look up Caster to see, because he gave his name, what his name was, uh, to see if he does have a connection uh, with Saber, with John Dark, and, like, how that all connects. Like, would, would it be safe for me to look up Saber, like, to see who she actually is? Because she keeps saying that she's the King of England. Like I said... This is, uh, because John Dark is French, so that's why I'm a little, like, that, is that right? I don't know. But I was like, I'm tempted to look up Saber to see, like, who she actually is, and if Castor is just, like, mistaken and just wanting to believe that, uh, that she is John Dark. Obviously, whoever Castor is, uh, his actual, um, title is, so whoever he was as a person is someone who's very obsessed with uh, John Dark. So that whole thing was kind of interesting there and uh, just showing how willing he is to uh, lure her out by um, basically using children as hostages. Um, and that was that was pretty fucked up. And then just like that moment where Ryonosuke, it's like you come in, you see that he just has a bunch of kids that he's torturing. Um, the whole thing about like the Tower of Babel or something that they need to they need to sacrifice more children in order to to have this thing is just like man oh man the two of them are so fucked up and I'm glad that we're getting more spotlight on Caster like these two episodes that were very Caster based especially the you know, the episode seven uh, also that talk with Gilgamesh and Kiri interesting it just seems like almost like Kiri's like a zombie he seems to have no desires. No motivation. Uh, he says that he doesn't uh, feel any joy in his life. He doesn't even know why he's doing this. He has, like, no reason to uh, even want the Holy Grail in the first place. He's basically just doing this because he was told to. And he's, uh, and I guess Gilgamesh kind of gave him a little pep talk about, like, you need to find out in your soul what do you want. So the two of them had, like, a little bit of a interesting conversation there. Um, Kiri just continues to be a very mysterious character and uh, just shows just how intimidating he is or how scary he can be because Kiritsugu, I I'm definitely saying his name wrong, like seems absolutely terrified of him. The fact that he was willing to run away from the whole holy grail fight and give up his desire to uh, to save the world just because he's so afraid of this guy Kiri coming after him and his family. So, and this is the mage killer, like he's a pretty infamous character himself so you know with how scared he is that Kiri is coming after him that really speaks a lot to him so interesting to get some more backstory on on those two and um what else man just a whole lot um I loved at the end with Lancer coming in to uh to help out um I almost said Caster the quite the opposite help defeat Caster help save her because I think they both they're both very similar but it's this whole thing about like I need to kill you, um, so I'm going to help you defeat Caster, and then I'm going to kill you. And also because we should kill Caster because he is breaking the rules. So I love that they almost have like a little bit of like a chivalrous, like, I'm not going to say a romance. It's not a romance. It's like a weird friendship or a weird like camaraderie. It's like a mutual respect for each other, but they also want to kill each other. Because Lancer has to kill her because he said he was going to. To his master, so he promised. And then Saber needs to kill him because uh, by killing him, she gets her wound healed. So, but they just have to team up because there's obviously a greater threat at hand here. And then uh, finding a little bit more about um, the mage's abilities. Uh, so, Kirisugu has like time control, and Archibald has that weird kind of like mercury looking thing, that blob. Um, like I said, I'm very interested to see what Waver, like, if he has any abilities. Ryanosuke, too. It's like he was just basically this 
guy who found a book and summoned um, a, a servant. He didn't even know what he was doing. Like, does he have any abilities? Because he hasn't trained to be a mage, I'm assuming. I was like, is, is it, does it run in his bloodline? Because he did say, like, he found it, it was, like, one of his ancestors' books. So, obviously, magic runs in the family. So, that'll be interesting as well. Uh, I, I'm just really excited to see how this fight with Castor is going to go. Uh, I imagine it's, I don't think they're just going to kill Castor off so soon. Like, he's such an interesting character, but I want him to die. But at the same time, I want him to stay because he definitely brings an interesting um, perspective. He brings some like a dynamic to this group of characters that is just so unique so um yeah obviously i love saber I mean, she's one of my favorites and i want her to survive but i, I want her to kill caster because she's so determined to kill caster but at the same time caster is just so weirdly entertaining but these were a good couple of episodes definitely like a little bit of a uh, slow down especially episode six from like all of the fighting from the previous episode but we definitely did have some action here and there, like this episode, episode 7, we uh, we definitely got some fights and some action. So I really like that we got some humor with Ryder and Waver. I'm hoping to see more of them in uh, in the next couple of episodes. I think that's it. It was just, there was a lot to take in. Hopefully I've covered everything I wanted to. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and discussion of episodes 6 and 7 of Fate Zero. And stay tuned next week for episodes 8 and 9. Until then, bye guys. Special thanks to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Jared Fan, Joel Ostman, Harry Gaziff, Pirate, Pancake G, Asborn Kennedy, and Icognito.